how far can you go if you challenge yourself? Well, find out today on Extraordinary Women TV, where we discover what it takes to follow our hearts and dreams. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, your host, and thanks for joining me. My guest is Canadian Juno Award nominee, singer-songwriter, Basha Bulat, who is distinguished for her soulful voice and talented songwriting. Well, Basha, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. It's so <laughs> nice having you here. <laughs> now, you uh, come from um, a family of uh, musicians or musically talented uh, <laughs> people, relatives. Your mom played the piano. It was a great inspiration for you. Yeah, she was. She was definitely my first musical influence. Um, my mom taught piano and guitar, and my brother and I both started on piano and then eventually moved on to other instruments, myself. A significant uh, variety of them and my brother plays percussion and he plays percussion on my albums as well. So you play the the auto harp, you're known for playing the auto harp. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, 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 uh, what intrigued you to learn this instrument? I mean you don't see it that often. <laughs> um, well actually I happened upon the instrument by chance. Uh, it was just a neighbor that was selling theirs at a yard sale. And um, then I started looking into um, the history of the instrument. And actually, it turns out that there's um, a bit of a history of really uh, strong women, actually, who play the instrument. Uh, people like Mother Maybell Carter and June Carter Cash. Um, so there's a, quite a history within like the bluegrass and folk tradition. But something about the instrument also that I love is that um, it has a lot more depth and range, I think, than people expect it to. I think they think of it as only sort of belonging in a bluegrass or folk world, but it's capable of like a wide variety of sounds, especially if you go electric with it. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you, a lot of your, your music is, um, or, or you're classified often as a, a folk singer. Yeah. Uh, leaning more into the contemporary folk. Uh, what? Uh, why did you choose this genre of music over any other? Um, that, I really couldn't say exactly why, but I think um, the one thing that attracts me about and sort of any kind of work of art is storytelling. Mm. And um, I do think that um, obviously folk music, it's a long-standing tradition of storytelling through songs. Um, I'm also really interested in writing and poetry and of course like uh, folk music is coming from ballad forms, and I think there's just a lot of room to play around um, in that regard. So, yeah, I think that's kind of where my interests lie, at least for the time being. Although I listen to all kinds of music, and I listen to um, everything ranging from punk rock to um, gospel music. <laughs> now you've just released your third album. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Tall Tall Shadow. Uh, what, now what's your album about? Um, the album and the song, Tall Tall Shadow, which became the title track of the album, um, it really is about um, going through a period of time in your life that is dark, but um, always looking towards the light, <laughs> so to speak. So in every song there is um, these elements of light and shadow, um, of sadness and joy, and I think that's sort of um, that juxtaposition and contrast between the two, they kind of live in each song. Um, I was going through um, a time in my life where I had lost someone very close to me um, and I wanted to make something that felt honest about how I was feeling at that time, but um, also something that celebrated life and had um, a positive um, emotion to it that could be sent out into the universe. <laughs> so it was cathartic for you. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, um, that isn't to say that uh, um, any album, I mean, every al everything I work on, I, I, I put a lot of thought and, um, and love into it. Um, but yeah, this time around, it was definitely also something more. <sighs> what do you hope people will get from your album? With this album, especially because it is a much more personal mm -hmm. work. Um, I hope that people will be able to see something of themselves, perhaps, in my lyrics. So hopefully um, there will be something that they can connect to and perhaps find 
I, for me, I, something that helps me get through um, difficult moments is music. I'm always turning to music, and I, I look for myself in songs and in stories that are in songs. So I'm hoping that maybe I can do the same. <laughs> what do you think it is, uh, or what do you think it is about music that many people turn to music to help them get through difficult times? Um, um, well, I think singing is, is a very physical thing and it's really the voice is the first instrument. Um, the body is the first instrument percussive. It can be very percussive as well as, um, I suppose, very vocal. Um, and I think we're born that way. I think we're, we're born and our parents are singing to us. And I think um, it's, it's, one of, it's something that it's, yeah, it's hard to explain, but it's always been there. It's been with us forever. So it could be something that I can't explain it, but it's, it's just the way it is. <laughs> A young woman, um, having just released your third album, I mean, that's a, that, that, that's a, that's a, a challenge in itself, yeah. getting an album made. <laughs> um, but something that you like to do is um, challenge yourself. Now, how important is, is it to challenge yourself? Um, well, for me, I feel it's very important. Mm -hmm. um, lyrically, I was pushing myself with this record to um, try not to hold anything back mm -hmm. and just try to... Uh, write what was coming to my mind without censoring myself necessarily right away um, or being too self-critical right away um, and um, I think with musically um, we mentioned the auto harp but I also play a lot of different instruments so I think I'm always pushing myself to learn a new instrument or do something else because uh, you never know what might happen so I think if you if you don't push yourself and maybe take yourself out of your comfort zone um, you're kind of crossing out all these possibilities for yourself before they even uh, have the potential to exist. Now, Basha, um, it's time for my good to know minute, okay. and I know you've got a great success tip. Um, yeah, my tip for success is to not let anyone else define success for you. Um, I think the only, I mean, if you define it for yourself um, and you work towards that, um, you'll always have gained something for yourself, and you can't play up to anyone else's expectations of you. Um, I think that's a way that you can live your life without any regrets. And that's good to know. <laughs> Thanks for that. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, more on Extraordinary Women TV. So stay where you are. Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm your host, Shannon Skinner. I'm speaking with singer-songwriter Basha Boulat. Uh, do you think that we're born with talent, or do you think that it is definitely something that uh, is, is outside of us and learned? I think it was Ella Fitzgerald. I think it's an Ella Fitzgerald quote, but I could be wrong. I just remember hearing it, and it stuck with me ever since that everybody can sing. And everybody does have a voice, and I think um, there's always um, fashion and trends mm -hmm. in terms of what kind of voices are popular at what time, but that doesn't make um, anyone's voice less valid or less beautiful. It's just different. Um, so for me, I, I love a lot of voices that maybe are not considered traditionally beautiful. <laughs> um, a lot of people use Bob Dylan as that example. I think his voice is fantastic, but I know he's not a, a classically trained sort of singer. <laughs> but um, so for me, the thing that I, I, I think, um, I think, yeah, I think there's talent and I think there's also technique and things that are learned. And, um, but I think most of all, I think really anybody can sing. Um, I think in terms of art, and how you use your voice, um, that's of course up to you. And, um, and I think for me the thing that I'm always looking towards is do I believe what the singer is singing and what the person is saying? Um, and, and that's kind of what I'm always looking for right now um, in songs and in singers. And what's your big dream going forward? Oh. Um, the dream for Basha. My dreams are fairly... Um, the, the big ones I like to keep to myself, just in case they don't happen. I don't like to, uh, I'm a little superstitious that way. You don't want to jinx the them? The biggest ones, yeah. <laughs> but um, I, think, I think in general, 
my goals are to um, just keep pushing myself in terms of my songwriting. Mm -hmm. um, I think as a musician and as a performer, um, I'd love to do um, more with visual elements of being on stage or videos and things like that. I'd love to explore that more, and so I'm, I'm trying to do that now. Um, and I think, I think I'm, yeah, I'm really just at this moment focused on writing and writing and writing and just. Uh, you write a lot. Yeah, and just trying You're to focus writing. on the work. I think if That's you great. focus on the work, um, and and try not to be too attached to any sort of outcome. Um, you know, you have your hopes and your aspirations, but um, at the end of the day, all that lasts is the work. <laughs> and where can people see you um, and come out and hear your music? Um, all of my tour dates are on my website, okay, which is bashabulat.com, or on my Facebook page. Um, I'm also on Twitter, and um, yeah, I'm touring throughout um, this fall and the new year in Canada, in the US, and in Europe, so anybody watching, if they want to see a show, they can. <laughs> you write a lot um, about the heart. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, they always say, write what you know. Kind of, I've started there, and I'm still there. Um, I, I think eventually I'll be able to move outside of there, <laughs> but I think I've always been attracted to songs and, and compelled by songs um, that feel very personal but have something in them that makes them universal. So that's kind of my goal that um, even though I'm writing about myself um, in some ways I'm also trying to have something in there that works on more than just one level um, whether it's playing with the words and playing with the lyrics so that they kind of can mean more than one thing um, or taking an idea that starts with myself and moves outward. Um, but that's something, yeah, that I've, I just, that's the only way I know how. Well, for more information about Extraordinary Women TV, my guests, and to watch past episodes, I invite you to visit the website at extraordinarywomentv.com. And to keep the conversation going, join me on Twitter at Shannon underscore Skinner for an empowering stream of Extraordinary Women TV updates. On Facebook, connect with me at Extraordinary Women TV. Well, thank you for joining me. I'm Shannon Skinner. See you soon.